Tonight is all about spreading the vegan message in a positive, light-hearted, interesting, creative way. To be an activist, it doesn't mean shouting on the streets. It can be, mean many things. It can be making films, writing articles, telling your story with passion and compassion. Um, I've got Francesca Page. She's an amazing environmental artist. Her work's recently been in Tibbetts. It's part of their art exhibition. She's done loads of amazing work. She studies at Camberwell College. So um, I'm going to hand you over to Francesca. Give her a warm round of applause. Um, hello everyone, thank you so much for having me. It's been an amazing evening so far. Um, I'm going to be talking about how I think visual communication is a very successful form of environmental activism. But before I start, I really would like to share a personal story with you guys. So I'd like to take you back to when I was 17 years old. Um, I was diving in the Philippines. This is towards a very intensive three-week diving holiday. And I was also about to complete my Thresher Shark diving course. Now, this... Oh, this was a video that I shot of a thresher shark, but it's now, it doesn't want to work. So I would just have to describe to you what a thresher is. Threshers are beautiful three to four meter long sharks. Their tails are about the same length as their bodies and they use them as a whip to stun huge sh shoals of fish uh, to catch their prey. They usually live about 100 meters <coughs> underwater and they will come up to about 30 meters at about five o'clock in the morning uh, to the cleaning stations, which Ali actually mentioned in his talk. And um, so I was going to go for a dive, um, but I had very blocked sinuses, and I really shouldn't have dived, but as a very persistent 17-year-old, I really wanted to dive. So I went in the water, and everyone did their buddy treks, and we went down, and I could not get past five metres. And so Angus, one of the dive masters, came with me, and we went down step by step, but no, I could not get past five metres. So about 10 minutes into the dive, and I was kind of catching on to the fact that I'm probably going to have to surface soon because I really can't push my ears. And suddenly I see a flash of silver to my right. And Angus, the dive master, points to my left, and there was a beautiful thresher shark circling us. And it was a really big one. It was about a four meter long one. And so it kept circling us, and it got closer and closer, and it got about a meter away from me. And this was the first time I'd ever had any type of connection with a marine creature, let alone a shark. And I remember I looked into its amazing big, big black eyes, and it was the first time that it was looking at me, it was observing me. And I had this beautiful connection with the shark for about 10 seconds, and I realized that I was looking at such an intelligent, thoughtful, and feeling sentient being. And after about this 10 seconds, it went off and swam off into the blue. I then fist pumped the air and was ecstatic. Um, and then I surfaced, and from that moment on, I realized that the, the ocean became my underwater playground, and there was actually nothing to fear. And I now class the ocean as my second home, and I really cannot wait to graduate and get back into the ocean. Um, so now I'd like to give you a little background knowledge about myself. I'm 21 years old. Uh, I study uh, illustration at Campbell College of the Arts. I have two months left, so I'm pretty stressed. Um, I was lucky enough to be brought up in a family where being around nature was encouraged at a young age and walking in the Dolomites in Italy and the Lake District was a highlight of my summer holidays. I've been drawing since I can remember and apparently my first ever drawing was of a cow so I was obviously born a vegan. Um, I've been diving since I was 13 years old and it really enabled me to see a world that not a lot of people can see. I went vegetarian three years ago and then went vegan two years, well, one year later, so two years ago. And it was really only about a year and a half ago that I really discovered this environmental journey. I remember around this time I became obsessed and I watched every single type of eco-documentary you could ever imagine. I watched loads of TED Talks and loads of YouTube videos and I came across this one YouTube video, no, actually a TED Talk, that really struck a chord with me. Um, it's called The Power of a Story by Giles Gooley. I'm very dyslexic, so I probably said that completely wrong. Um, and he said something that really resonated with me. He said, um, get to the next slide. Ooh. Oh, it's not there, but anyway. Uh, he said, use your skills to create change. And that really got me thinking that I really wanted to create change. And drawing was my skill. But I am a storyteller and a visual communicator. But stories have no power if there's no one to listen to them. So at this time, I really got interested in thinking, how can I create art that gets people thinking? How can I make people um, start questioning their beliefs and start creating action? I think illustration is a 
conversational starter. And it's a beautiful way for people to start thinking and questioning their lifestyle and beliefs. Um, so now I want to sort of show you how I work as an artist. Um, I draw everything and I always have a sketchbook on me wherever I go. And so this is just some images I shot from last summer. So I'm always drawing the natural world, but when I draw something, I try and not focus on making it look like the, what I'm seeing in front of me. I'm always just trying to focus on the shapes and the colours and the feelings that I have in that pre present moment. So I'm always drawing everything around me. And now I'd like to take you on a little journey from start of a project to the end of a project. Uh, around last year, I got... Um, oh, I do lots of research as well. <laughs> um, around last year, I got really interested in the Amazon and... I met up with a shaman, his name's Nick Siwaka, incredible guy, and that's a little portrait I did of him. And I met up with him, we went for coffee, and we had the most amazing four-hour chat. This guy is incredible. Um, he taught me all about plant medicine, his connection of growing up in the Amazon rainforest and having such a spiritual and amazing time. And also, he taught me about all the devastation that's happening in the Amazon, and he's seen it through his very own eyes. He came over to England about a couple of years ago to learn English so then he could spread his message for the tribal people. Um, he worked with Survival International, which is an amazing charity, you should go check it out, who work with tribal people's rights. Um, he is also an amazing artist, and I think this is environmental art in its own right, but he's using painting to convey his messages. So within his paintings, he really tries to document the connection that the people have in the Amazon with nature. They live in such a symbiotic and beautiful way, and they live with nature, not against it, that we do in our society. Um, so he was a really inspiring man, and I was so inspired by talking to him that I really, really wanted to somehow document this and illustrate this in some way. So then I went and drew loads of tribal people, because <laughs> I realized through research that indigenous reserves are the main barrier for Amazon destruction. So this is the Yanomami tribe, and they actually manage and care for the largest areas of protective rainforest. So in fact, if you save the tribal people, you actually save the rainforest, and hundreds and thousands of amazing insects and you know, plants and animals. So yeah, these are some of the drawings that I've done. And then from that, I teamed up with a really amazing vegan artist named Lucy Harris. You should go check her out. And we decided to create a map on the Amazon rainforest. So this was the final product. I don't have time to go through all the stages. But we decided to focus on just the Amazon rainforest. Forget about the countries and the borders, because that, that's not important. We really wanted to focus on just the tribal people, like through the eyes of the tribal people. And so we were really heavily inspired by medieval maps and how playful and figurative they were. And so we really wanted to draw such a uh, powerful and quite a dark topic in a very sort of light-hearted matter. So I got really interested in maybe looking at comic book strips. So this is completely freehand. The original is about A1 and it took about 500 hours to do. Um, <laughs> and so yeah, so we wanted to pack, pack fill it with um, lots of information and lots of brands. I mean, it was an A1 piece, so I think if I was to do it again, I'd do it a lot bigger and put a lot more information into it. These are just sort of little um, screenshots. Uh, Lucy did all the little tribal people within the map. But yeah, so we were really happy with the final outcome of this piece. And oh yeah, so a little fact is KFC, um, all of the soya grown uh, in the Amazon is fed, well, not all of it, but all of the soya that is fed to their chickens comes from the Amazon. And to add a double whammy, all of the cardboard, so the product, the packaging that the chicken comes in, ca it comes from a company that is involved in illegal logging in the Amazon. And I mean, that's just one example that I found from my research. There's so many others, obviously McDonald's, uh, there's Nike, uh, you've got mining, you've got, oh, there's just so many things, but um, I don't have time to go in, into all of it. So that's uh, one project that I did. Um, this was another project I did. This was a uh, image that, I had actually at a very young age, when I was a little girl, I remember seeing trees and thinking they reminded me of the planet and all the layers of the earth. And so I kind of wanted to create a piece about how important trees are to the planet, the trees are the lungs of our planet, and sort of show how we can all live together in harmony with mother nature. So that's one piece. Um, I, then want to, I then did a uh, comic book strip on, um, wait, I don't know. This is the right PowerPoint, but anyway, we'll continue. 
<laughs> oh, whoops, anyway. Um, so uh, I then did a uh, comic book strip on uh, sort of the animal agriculture happening in Asia, and this was... Uh, I've never done a comic book strip before, so it was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, but yeah, this is about tigers through the life of a mother tiger. Um, and that, yeah, little comic book strip. And this is what I'm doing at the moment. I'm doing a project on the ocean at the moment, and I'm covering topics about plastic, uh, about bycatch. So these are just scanning sketches. I I haven't done the final piece yet, but uh, that will be that will come in the future. And I did. This was actually a response drawing to a video I saw a couple of weeks ago, and it's of a, a girl I follow on Instagram, and she went on shot a very very powerful moving uh, video of. Um, this is a shark being caught and then slaughtered. And so I kind of did a very sort of quick ink and pen uh, drawing in response to that video. Um, I, as an eco-artist, I only work with ethical companies and ethical people. So this is Sharks for Kids, a piece I did for Sharks for Kids. It's an amazing company based in Bimini in the Bahamas. And Gillian, the um, owner, she Skypes schools from all over the world and tries to educate and put passion into children about the ocean and about sharks, so hopefully when they grow up, they'll be shark ambassadors. Um, this is a piece I did for Tibits, which is a London vegetarian and vegan restaurant, which is based on Regent Street. And um, I actually did it with someone here in the audience, his name's Robbie Lockie. Um, uh, <laughs> and yeah, it was really beautiful and amazing to work with a, uh, a restaurant that's so passionate about uh, vegetarian and vegan food, and I really enjoyed working with such an ethical company. A bio rock, for people who don't know what a bio rock is, it's an artificial reef. Um, and so what you do is you create a sculpture or a structure made from iron, and you connect it to electricity that passes through the iron. It then extracts calcium from the water and produces lime scale, which means that the corals could then grow on it. So when I was 16, I had the amazing opportunity of making a bio rock in Indonesia. And uh, in my opinion, I think this is a beautiful form of environmental art. Um, and we went in that local area, there's a lot of dyna dyna dynamite fishing. And so um, we went and collected the broken pieces of coral and we attached it to our bio rock. And then a couple of years later, my brother went back and he shot, took a photograph of our bio rock and it had flourished into this beautiful, amazing sculpture. Well, and well, art, well, nature was being the ultimate artist in this scenario but what I love about Byrock so much is that it doesn't just benefit the local ecosystem and the marine life it also benefits the people above land it creates so much amazing ecotourism and also for tourists who are you know swimming in and snorkeling in that local area they get to see these Byrocks and it, you know they can get they get to ask questions why are these Byrocks here and the reason why these Byrocks are here because the corals are dying at an alarming rate um, Ali said something had said about talk, talk, talked about it in his um, in his talk. So um, in my opinion, that is like art can be like when I talk about art, it doesn't have to be a painting in a gallery, or it doesn't have to be, you know, the conventional painting. It can be literally anything. When I say creativity, it could be anything. It could be a poem. It could be a dance. It could be if you're a gardener, it could, you could create this beautiful garden inspired by um, environmental. Um, uh, actions. Um, what I'm trying to say is I want to inspire people to use your skill to create change. Whatever it is, everyone in this room has a talent, has a skill, and everyone in this room has a passion. We're all here tonight. We're all clearly passionate about the environment, and we're all clearly passionate about activism. So what I'm trying to say is I really want people to go leave tonight and really question what it is that they're good at what it is that they're passionate about. I remember when I really started this topic, um, I did a massive mind map and I wrote down all the things that I was passionate about. And I still got this mind map and I'm slowly chipping my way through each topic because there's a lot of topics on there. So go, like, go home and do a mind map. Think about what are you good at? If you're good at cooking, if you're good at tattooing, if you're good at, I don't know, talking, if you're good at whatever it is, whatever you're good at, use that to create change, whether it's changing one person's opinion or two people's opinion or getting someone to cut out chicken from their diet or getting some, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, you don't need someone to go vegan. It's just small steps and it's getting people to think and slowly create change. For me, art is the most powerful form of visual communication. As artists, I feel like I have this uh, amazing opportunity where I can 
talk to people from all over the world, from different languages, from different backgrounds, from different cultures. Um, so I think it's a really important and inspiring medium. Um, so yeah, I kind of want to end this talk by just saying, get your skill and create, like, use your skill to create change and let your imagination run wild. Um, I'm really sorry that some of the slides weren't on here, but um, if you're interested in seeing more of my work, um, this is my website, and I love Instagram, so go follow me on Instagram. I also have a YouTube, a Facebook, and an Etsy store. So yeah, thank you. I feel really inspired. As someone who likes creating stuff, I just want to say thank you for sharing with us. It's amazing. And then um, I think everyone else in here would agree as well. Yeah. So um, we've got time for a five minute Q&A. Can you tell us more about your plans when you graduate and what your plans are for your art and your direction? Um, well, I graduate in July and oh, I'm kind of scared of getting a nine to five job, and, you know. <laughs> doing that type of thing. <laughs> do <it. laughs> I don't want to do it. Um, I will, I'm a dive master in training, so my dream at the moment is to go off for three months and get my dive masters. Um, I also just really want to go off traveling, and the typical, like, oh, want to go traveling when I graduate. But I actually really do want to go traveling, but try and work with, get involved with uh, companies and I don't know, I just really want to um, learn more. I feel like I've, I'm just at the beginning of my journey and I'm only 21, will be 22 very soon. So I feel like I'm so young and I've got so much ahead of me. So I think I really want to get back in the water. I really miss diving, so I think that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, I think I'm just going to try and document as much as I can. like, And then I'm going to come back, maybe, I don't know, come back to England, maybe create some stuff. But I definitely want to collaborate with loads of ethical companies and ethical people. I feel like my degree kind of stunted those collaborations. And I feel like in July, I'm going to be really able to collaborate with m as many people as possible, which will be really exciting. So yeah, thank you. Another question for me? I was just wondering if you knew any other platforms or collaborations or anything out there at the moment for artists to get involved with, um, but be that dancers working with musicians mm. or film artists, poets, whatever it is, so that everyone who has an idea and is really passionate about mm. everything to do with the ecosystem and stuff, that we can all put our heads together and try and create something that therefore might be really impactful. Mm. Um, I think for me, where I've got sort of found all of the people that I've collaborated with were through Instagram. That's like the platform that I really like to use. It's really visual. Um, but I think social media, like I'm constantly adding random divers on Facebook and going, hey, you film sharks, that's cool. Tell me more about that. <laughs> so like, I'm constantly just talking to people like, and um, turning to, up to events and talking to people. and. But I think, for me, Instagram was, is a really good platform as an artist. But I think if you're a dancer, if there's YouTube, there's so many, like, as much as I hate technology and hate social media, I also love it because it's able, it's made me connect with people from all over the world. Like, for Sharks for Kids, I found her through a YouTube video. I then added her on Facebook somehow. We then got talking 24 hours later, and then we Skyped a week later and had the most amazing three-hour conversation about sharks. So, like, that's how amazing social media is. It's so powerful. Yeah. We have time for one more question. Uh, yeah, just quickly an example of what you were talking about, applying artistic talent <coughs> to make a point, whatever. At school, I wasn't that good an artist, but as an activist, I actually went to the Faroe Islands, I spoke to a few of your friends earlier, where they killed their whales on the beaches. And my way politically under the radar was to, as a street artist, draw whales and dolphins as a busker. And it catalyzed conversation and talking, etc., amongst themselves. But also whale and um, dolphin sculptures on the beaches, on the killing beaches, where instead of it being political, it's about the kids coming down, speaking to teachers, and again, under the radar, they're all talking about, oh, 
we don't eat whales because it's cruel, because it's contaminated. So it was actually a way in using that sort of creative energy as a catalyst. Just an example. Oh, that's cool. Thank you for sharing. Cool. Sadly, that's going to have to be it. Give a massive round of applause for that. <laughs> So thanks so much for coming tonight. It's been it's been amazing. Yeah, I feel really so inspired. Much.